Namaskar and uh, very good afternoon. Uh, so we're talking about something very interesting and uh, something that uh, I was thinking about while <coughs> I was uh, coming to uh, give this TEDx, TEDx talk. Uh, I started on a bicycle actually to come to here because you know, on Saturdays <coughs> I normally take a bicycle uh, to work or wherever at, at least one day of the week I try to uh, be carbon neutral or carbon negative as, as far as uh, commuting is concerned. Uh, but uh, uh, of course I had to I had to reach here on time and, and uh, the place was a little new so I took a car and came. But uh, a few thoughts that came to mind you know while uh, I was uh, preparing myself uh, to do something which I have not done before is, is the TEDx talk. And uh, the Punarottan, the, the th theme that uh, we have today uh, got me into a little bit of a nostalgia, you know, when we were as kids and we uh, uh, used to learn a, a lot of philosophy and theory connected to either a way of life or religion or uh, just being good humans, you know, so to say. Uh, so revival or rejuvenation is, is what uh, we are basically talking about. And when you talk of a subject like this, you sometimes get very... Uh, metaphorical and then you, you get a little obscure because it's such a wide topic and, and it is something that has uh, so much of substance into it. So to pick up a line from there and, and talk about something that uh, would reach to a particular audience and if we can find uh, some common grounds <coughs> with all of you people here and, and all the people who would be listening to this, uh, that I think uh, would make uh, uh, good use of this opportunity that I have and also good use of the time that people would uh, be spending listening to me here. Uh, so uh, I'm an environmentalist. You know, my passion is uh, uh, energy. My passion is uh, green energy. So I always say uh, unless we have Swadeshi Urja, we cannot have Swavalambi Bharat. You know, unless you produce our energy in this country, self-reliance will never come. We became independent in 1947. But we are still uh, dependent on the basic uh, necessities of life. <coughs> so you talk about uh, different uh, areas where we use energy and I've chosen agriculture because that's where I come from. I'm, I'm a son of a farmer and uh, even though I'm working on high tech things, I still am a farmer uh, in the mind and farmer uh, in, in the heart. So 118 million farmers in this country uh, who own less than two hectares of land. <coughs> All of these farmers today are a sucker to the economy. You know, we always say that we have to give things to the farmer. Just imagine if 118 million farmers become entrepreneurs, if they become small medium enterprises and they start becoming more and more productive. A, we will not have suicides in the country. <laughs> I mean, that, that's something that pains each one of us. It's not just me alone. Uh, but uh, it will also bring agriculture to the forefront and <clears throat> help India attain at least 10 to 12 percent growth rate year on year and, and not only India, this will create a food grain bowl for the world. It will have a lot, a lot of impact to the world. Now agriculture contributes 24% to the carbon emissions that we have. So that's also a flip side. Uh, how can you kind of take care of that? Uh, so that, that's one thought, you know, uh, which is, uh, uh, which, which always I wake up with and which uh, troubles me day in day out. How can we improve the lives of these people? Uh, on the other side, if we look at uh, our general <coughs> well-being or general health as a subject, uh, we had the COVID pandemic in the year 2020-2021 and uh, all of us remember that pandemic because that was the first time in our lifetime or maybe in the lifetime of even our parents or grandparents where the world got shut for what almost 120 days and then second phase, third phase, whatever it was. Five and a half million people died because of COVID and it warranted that we could shut down the world for that much amount of time. About half a million women die of indoor air pollution every year. About five million die because of the perils of climate change. So how many minutes have we kept the world shut for this? That's a question that uh, uh, haunts me every day and, and I want to put that question to all of you as well. Zero, you know, so, which means that we are really not bothered about uh, what happens to the environment. We were too worried about even if somebody sneezed, 
post covid i remember you know that person became like uh, uh, somebody you don't want to be close to you know they, 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 there was always uh, the person was looked at and for climate uh, there is nothing that we are doing we, we really not bothered about uh, but what happened uh, in covid you know it, it gave uh, birth to a lot of possibilities the whole world came together i think that's the first time the world came together to fight something you know i remember a movie that i have uh, seen a couple of times i forget the name of this movie but uh, there there was an alien attack on the world and then that's where the whole world came together and they had uh, depicted the president of the united states giving a speech before they launched that attack and <clears throat> he says that we will not perish you know we will fight and we will win over this and uh, of course as they had they they won the battle and they destroyed whatever that alien enemy was so that that exactly what happened when uh, we encountered covid and all of us got together we created something that uh, we now call as the covid vaccine we all got vaccinated of course we used uh, the mask uh, while we were uh, during the pandemic and i think uh, that's what uh, you know would look very familiar to all of us uh, so what can we do for environment what can we do uh, for our planet do we have a planet b or c or d <coughs> or any of you brilliant engineers sitting here or people scientists all across the world can we find a place that we can migrate if earth is going down at least for now the answer is no whether it is ai or bi or whatever comes in the answer definitely is no uh so what is the solution <coughs> for this and one of the reasons why i also accepted to come and attend this uh, uh, tedx talk today there have been distinguished speakers that uh, are also speaking and have spoken but uh, a message that i want to uh, bring forth and uh, a commitment that i want to bring with all of us sitting here uh, is that uh, we need to come together the covid vaccine had about 118 components you know which got together and they could make the vaccine why can't we all come together as a humanity and become these components and why can't we create something that uh, we call as the climate change vaccine and i think this is something that we owe it to our earth we owe it to the soil as much as we owe it to our nation our societies our people our future and also our present because you know we all talk about that we should be environmentally conscious because we want to leave a better planet for our children but i'm going to live here as well right i mean i don't intend to uh, die anytime soon uh, i for one i i always have this wish that i should live at least till i turn 100 and uh, when i the day i turn 100 i want to do something for the environment and also run a marathon you know those are my personal wish lists uh, from uh, the almighty whenever they you know grant me a wish but uh, the prayer uh, today and the ask today is uh, for all of us <coughs> to come together for us to create that urja or we call energy you know in sanskrit we call it urja and it is only through urja that you can bring unnati prosperity can always come only through power and when you talk about power or when you talk about earth or you talk about the climate uh, this is the only way i believe that you can reach to the greater god or to the third force that we believe in because uh, what we have today what we are walking today is energy and if you are able to feed this body with good energy with positive energy only then will we be able to survive will we be able to do the good work that uh, we are all uh, here for so i would uh, you know take this thought uh, with all of you uh, on the climate change vaccine and Uh, hope that uh, i will get contributions in terms of the intelligentsia in terms of participation and we take a pledge today that we will at least do one thing which will help us build this vaccine so that one thing perhaps could be maybe not use an automobile uh, or a fossil based vehicle for 4 hours in a week or at least on a sundays or a saturday <coughs> become a little more uh, responsible on the climate side you know instead of doing big innovations if we take climate responsibility as the main topic either in our schools or in kindergartens if every child is taught climate responsibility <coughs> as much as we teach them to be good human beings if they can be good climate beings then i think we will bring about a change and this change will be a radical change if if you really look at transition that has happened in the world we started from the stone age where you know we used stone 
Then we went on to wood, we went on to coal, gasoline, solar, and now we're talking about uh, things like hydrogen or ammonia or, you know, the new age fuels. Uh, those the scientists are capable of doing and entrepreneurs are capable of building. But if each one of us uh, becomes a little more responsible, even 2% more responsible, and with that 2%, you will be able to save about 0.1% of the climate crisis. So we're talking about 51 billion tons of CO2 or carbon that is emitted uh, in the atmosphere every year. If each one, let's just talk about people sitting here. If each one of us does that, over a lifetime, we'll be able to save at least 1% of that 51 billion tons of carbon that is emitted. So these are small components, and this is how each one of us can become a participant to this revolution. So this is the only revolution that is happening in the world where without spending a single penny, without having a degree, without having a PhD, you can be a participant and you can make a world of a difference. And you can bring the change. As uh, Mahatma Gandhi always said that, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. And I would, you know, take a last thought uh, on the topic of the climate change vaccine. Uh, again, uh, drawing out of what uh, the Mahatma had once said, that uh, Earth has enough for everyone's needs, but not for everyone's greed. So the moment we sacrifice that greed and we take uh, the principle of less is more. So if we try to do more of the things that are necessary and less of the things that are unnecessary, I think only that less is more will help us contribute towards uh, building of this climate change vaccine. And I think this is the best gift that we can give or this is the best uh, pledge we can take. We have a debt uh, to our planet. We have a debt to the planet Earth, our motherland. And if we are able to do this, uh, uh, we will be remembered in history. Uh, we will die peacefully whenever we die and, and we'll leave this world better than we found. Thank you very much.